We want to welcome you to the pulpit of Upper King Kigia Baptist Church. Um, this will be our fourth Sunday, uh, the first Sunday of the month, and every first Sunday of the month, you know, we celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper uh, called the Communion. And uh, today I want to begin my uh, service with doing just that. We'll read a portion of scripture, make a few comments, and then we will break bread together. So this will give you time to prepare yourself, uh, to prepare the elements, because I know some of you are not able to join us uh, physically for service here at the church. So I would pray that you will be able to get the stuff ready ahead of time and uh, so we can break bread together. With that, I just want to uh, open our service with a time of prayer as we look uh, to our great God. So let's uh, so bow with me for a word of prayer this, uh, this day as we bring our hearts before God in repentance and also in praise and worship. Let's pray together. Father, again, we want to thank you for your mighty grace. Oh, how you have loved us. And Father, you've not only said you love us, you've shown us through giving your only begotten Son of our Lord Jesus Christ, who went on Calvary's cross to take all of our sins. But the shedding of his blood, we have been cleansed. By taking our sins, we have been forgiven. So Lord, we come to you and we accept this gift of salvation that you've given to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And we are so thankful, Lord, for we could not in million lifetimes ever work our way to come to the holy habitation that you have prepared for us. For, Father, we are not able to receive salvation by our own ability, works, knowledge, or whatever else we may think will bring us closer to you. But thank you through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, we have been washed, we have been cleansed. And we've been brought before your presence. For this we want to thank you. So this day we just want to again lift our voice in the word. And lift our hearts to you Lord in prayer. And come to you and say Lord you know our weaknesses. You know our faults and failures. You know everything about us. But yet your word tells us that you are long suffering. Patient towards us. For you know we are flesh. You know that we have no strength except the strength that you would give to us through your Holy Spirit and through the Word so that we can come in your very presence. And this day, Lord, we just want to take this opportunity to come again, to again reflect back on the ordinance that your only begotten, our Lord and Savior, had given to us, who said, do this in remembrance of me. Father, again, to bring us to a place never to forget the price that has been paid on Calvary's cross for our sins. So for this we want to thank you and praise you as we look into your word. Prepare our hearts this day, Lord, as we come before you in your presence. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I've taken uh, my passage to read about um, the Lord's Supper. That's what it was called, and it was a time, the last uh, Lord's Supper Jesus will have with his disciples, and it is at this uh, Passover that Jesus will enact the ordinance of the communion, and he would encourage the disciples to say, do this in remembrance of me. So I'm going to pick the story from Luke chapter 22, verse, verse 14. He says, and when the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall never again eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken the cup and given thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the wine from now until the kingdom of God has come. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, The cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of the one betraying me is with me on the table. For indeed the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to discuss among themselves which one of them might be he who was going to do this thing. Why did the Lord give us this ordinance? It was that pivotal night, the last Passover he will have with his disciples before he goes on Calvary's cross to die for our sins. The disciples didn't seem to understand that. They were still hoping he would not be going to Calvary's cross. In fact, Peter tried to stop him. But he told Peter, get behind me, Satan. Because that is the purpose he came, to pay for all our sins on Calvary's cross, so that you and I would be reconciled to our Heavenly Father. With that, there were two elements that Jesus would use at that Passover supper. They'd already had their, their meal, so when he took the cup and he took the bread again and broke it and gave it to them and said, eat all of you, right among that apostles, there was Judas Iscariot who was going to uh, betray him. And he did. But nonetheless, Jesus will go to Calvary's cross to die for all our sins. But that night when he gave this ordinance, the significance of this ordinance was one, we would never forget the price he paid on our behalf for our sins. It cost him his life, God's only begotten, to die in your place, in my place, so that you and I can come back to the Father and we have the opportunity and the privilege to call him our Father as the Lord had taught in the prayer. So again, I want you to reflect at this time on the two elements, the cup and the bread. The bread is symbolically, it does not change in its element. It is still a piece of bread, but Jesus will symbolically take the bread and say, this is my body, that is broken for you. That means he gave up his body. Remember he had taught he is the bread of life. And if anyone who eats this bread will in him become a living soul. Not that communion saves us, but he gave up his body. And symbolically these were the elements of life we eat food every day, we need uh, nourishment every day, and Jesus, by giving up his body, gave us this picture that whenever we come together as believers, as we have a practice to in this church, every first Sunday of the month, we break bread together to remind ourselves the cost, the cost for our sins. And not only that, his blood that was shed to cleanse us from all sin. And this is the new covenant. So the, uh, the cup and the communion was basically to remind us of the new covenant that Jesus would give to us as his disciples. And so today I want you to just take that little bread as he would have for us. And then also to take the little cup, that wine that he would prepare to help us understand that this was his blood, symbolically to remind us that it took his life, 
to give us eternal life. So with that, again, let me just remind God's people a couple of things. When you and I partake of this uh, piece of bread during our service, it is to remind us that we have partaken not only in Christ's death, but also in his resurrection. He paid the price for that which brought eternal death, separated from the Father. He paid it with his very life, with his body on Calvary's cross. And when we drink the cup, we are also reminded that it was his blood that was shed for you and me, not your blood. The rightful place for each one of us is to be on that cross, paying for our sins, but Christ paid it on our behalf. So first it is to help us to focus the price that was exacted for our sins. Secondly, it was not only by taking the, uh, the symbols, the bread and the cup, it was also our commitment that when we partake of the bread and we partake of the wine, we are saying, I have died on Calvary's cross with my Jesus Christ. I have died to sin. And because his blood cleanses us from all sin, his blood gives us the new covenant and there is new life in him alone. So today as you partake, when you take the bread, I'm going to give thanks for it and we're going to eat together. By eating it, you're saying, I am committing my life to the Lord Jesus Christ as he gave his life for my sake. Would you do that at this time after prayer? We'll eat together. Father, again, I want to thank you that Christ offered himself, all of himself, on Calvary's cross on our behalf. His body was surrendered on that cruel cross so that I would not have to go on the cross. Even though I still have to carry my cross and follow him, but he paid that price. And for that we want to thank you. Symbolized by this little morsel of bread to remind me the price that was paid on Calvary's cross. With thankful heart, we partake of this bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you partake of this bread together? As we have partaken this piece of bread, Symbolically, if you would understand that by partaking this element, like I said, you have participated in Christ's death. And if you participate in Christ's death, you will also participate in his resurrection by faith. So as I have partaken of this and you Wherever you are, would partake of this bread. You're saying, I'm joined with this brother, with this sister. We are joined to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now I'd like just to have a word of prayer for thanksgiving for the cup. And then we will all drink together in closing.